Hi there friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots and I'm here with a pirate gnome to make, complete with a hook, a peg leg, and the most regal, probably stolen jacket. This is our pirate gnome. If you'd like to make him, stick around, but first give him a boop on his little nose. As always, please like this video so I know you're here crafting with me. So I know you guys love it when I do this. So here's a gnome. There's two pirates here. There's an easy one, which is on the right, and then our little more detailed one with the pirate boot, the peg leg, the tricorn hat. You can make the other style hat if you'd like. But if you want to make the one on the right, it's super easy. Just cover your entire gnome in felt, add a sash, and maybe a... Um, patch and then skip to the part where we're making the boot and the peg leg but for this guy this is the one i'm going to make on the left i love him uh it was a little bit of work but i'm going to use this minky fabric it's a little bit stretchy uh for the jacket but that doesn't really matter i just wanted something very regal i also used a piece of like darker red soft felt and black felt uh, that is soft. We're going to make a sash and cover the gnome hat. And for the stiff felt, this is the money here for the boot and for the tricorn hat. If you're making the other style pirate hat, you can do that as well. Okay, so this is optional. I chose to make a little buckle and um, what do you call them? Buttons for the jacket out of this glitter foam. I got it at Michael's. It's in the kids section, but it's easy to hole punch, which made perfect little buttons. You can use anything you want. I'm going to show you an option here in a second. And then for the hands uh, or hand and those, you can use whatever style, wood bead, clay bead, button, anything you want. This is the star of the show. These seven inch cones, I'm starting a full series with these guys. Get them on Amazon. They were super inexpensive. And it doesn't matter if they're damaged, but the bottom needs to have no holes in it because we are going to use this as our base to build on. And we want that to be pretty secure because we're going to be using dowels. Now, if you've never made... Uh, like boots or shoes for gnomes. Don't worry. I'm gonna walk you through it. The pat pattern will have everything you need, but we aren't going to use the style where you use the rollers to sort of add the bulk. We're going to weight it down. So you need rocks or something a little heavier for that boot. Um, for the buttons, I just used a hole punch, but here's another idea for the buttons if I can hold them. So you see my button, but if you have little star brads or round brads um, from scrapbooking stuff or paper crafting, you can use those for buttons as well. And we are going to need pins, straight pins. <gasps> And before we get started, I'm here with a friendly gnome reminder to subscribe. How? Just click that red subscribe button below and then the bell for turning on all notifications. Now let's get back to Sarah and the crafts. Did you like it? I made it again. Okay, so we're going to start with our seven inch cone, styrofoam cone, and mine is damaged, so I'm writing B for back because there's a big hole in it. Um, okay, so the first part is you're going to take and wrap your clothing to size. Now, this part is 100% optional depending on how, you know, tall you want your gnome's uh, hat to be, but mine is three, I think it's three by ten excuse me, 10 and a half inches. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap that around back. Um, the one thing to note is you want it to sort of hang down a little bit. So wherever you're putting the top of your body, just make sure you have enough foam that it covers sort of that bottom edge. We are going to cover the bottom edge by taking our cone and tracing a circle out on the bottom and just cutting that out. We're not gonna attach it till the end, so just set it aside. But what we want is to mark where our hat begins because we want the hat to cover uh, the bottom or the top of that clothing. And so all you're gonna do is roll your cone, cut it to size, and then trim off the bottom at the part that you're shirt meets. And then I just cut a small beard for a rectangle. You do any kind of beard you want. This is Mongolian fur. It's a three inch pile and I love it. If you're new to my channel, uh, I use it a lot because it's just so elegant looking. And you can rough it up to make it look really rough and tumbly looking. All right, so to get started with our assembly, all we're gonna do is we're gonna hot glue one side down here, making sure we have our placement correct. You see how it's kind of hanging over the bottom? And then we're just gonna uh, do the other side as well. Now, for your gnome beard, you can do anything you want. You can braid it, you can style it, you can split it, you can add a mustache, uh, just glue it on at just the top of where your shirt part is. And then I created a buckle 
uh, by just creating a tiny little rectangle and using a razor to cut out the center of the rectangle for the buckle. And then I created a sash. And because this was my very last piece of black, you know, flexible felt, my sash only goes part way around, but it's okay because his jacket covers it up. <laughs> we're gonna glue that down and then we're gonna add the buckle right in the middle. Isn't this easy? It's easy so far. Okay, so now we're just gonna glue on our nose. Always make sure that you put the front of the hat part first because it's going to have that cute little scrunch right down. So put a little bit of hot glue and then press lightly in the center, just put it there. And then you're just going to roll the back hot glue it and if you need to clean up any of your glue which I do all the time cut it with a razor or scissors uh, don't try and move it around with your finger just wait till it's dry and then you can cut it okay so for this part we are going to now create the tricorn hat and you don't need a pattern all you need is a circle ish shape okay so i used the bottom of our little guy i added about an inch all the way around and i used chalk to create my circle is it a perfect circle no it's not if you would like a perfect circle please add a compass or a you know tupperware lid to your crafting supplies but we are going to create this and then we're going to i just this is why i use chalk so <laughs> i can just rub it off but now we're going to um cut out the center i know it seems kind of weird but we're just this is the stiff felt okay so we're going to fold it it won't crease it i promise and then we're just going to create a hole right in the center so just clip that right off easy peasy lemon squeezy and now i'm just cutting four points around that circle so that i can easily cut um because again this is stiff felt so it doesn't move as easy as the craft felt but what you're going to do is just cut that circle all the way around you don't want to go smaller than an inch brim because it just won't look right i messed it up so just take it from me I think this one is about an inch and a quarter. So what we're gonna do is you can see, it looks kind of like a witch's hat right now, right? This, by the way, is the exact same, oh, yeah, I had to take a drink of water uh, in my gnome's cup. Okay, so this is how we're gonna make it. We're just going to pull up either side so the front is comes to a point. So make sure you have it where you want it because, and you need to get out two things. You need to get your hot glue gun back out, but you also need to get out those straight pins. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to raise up the front on the left and then we're going to glue it and then pin it in front and back of the glue. Don't try and go through the glue. Then we're going to repeat that on the other side. Okay. So just make sure that you like the way the front is pulled down. You can even pull it down farther than this. Okay. So we repeated that on the other side and now we're getting to that beautiful regal jacket. So I have a pattern piece for you. You don't have to worry about creating your own. It's not a rectangle. So if you do want to create your own, see that it's not a rectangle, but all I do is use a little bit of chalk and then cut on the inside of the shading. Okay. So after you unpin it, now we are going to hem all of the inside edges because this does fray this sort of minky. Oh, it's so soft fabric, but you're going to create the tiniest little seams uh, just by using hot glue. Now, I get asked a lot, do I use fabric hot glue? I do for some projects. I do for, I, I don't for others. I would recommend if you're working with a nice fabric to use fabric hot glue. And you can get that on the link below in my gnome supplies. And so here we are, we're just going all the way around and now all four edges are hemmed. Now we can get yourself a stand because this part is 100% your call. Stick your little fella on the stand or a cup or something because this is personal preference. I wanted my jacket to hang down below his body. And so what I did is I put the shorter side at the top and the back goes all the way up under that hat. And then I sort of pointed down the front and then I put pins in just to hold it there making sure it's even. So now you can see I have my arm pieces cut out and my collar piece cut out. And we're just going to leave this here while we build the rest of it. So this is the collar piece out of stiff felt. And what it does is it wraps all the way around, gives it a little bit of a finished look, but it also helps hide the arms <laughs> so that you don't have to like really make a whole full on sewing pattern with armholes and everything. Okay. So these are going to go, like I said, up under there. Um, so we're going to make sure that the, uh, direction of our fabric is correct because I messed up one and we're just going to hem one of the short edges. Okay. That's it. 
don't worry about anything else yet and just fold it over for both edges so this is the part that's going to be near the hands right so we're gonna oh so this one is for the hands so what i was showing you there is please don't go all the way to the bottom so what you're going to do is this is the one with the little round bead and the other one's going to be um the hook so for the hook all i did is i took a 12 gauge wire i got it at the dollar store so not very expensive and i wrapped it around a pen mm -hmm. i'm so technical and then i just cut it with scissors because it's really not that bad and then I just placed it in and then we're gonna hot glue that down but first you know how the there's a, I don't know what it's called but there's this little cup thing at the end of a hook in those pirate movies I just cut a circle stuck it onto my um piece of wire and sort of rounded it around that wire and that way it sort of looks like it's finished instead of just a wire poking out of a sleeve and then I just glued down that part the little circle part before I glued down um I put the glue on the wire and on that seam and then you just press it down and that one will be done I know I'm taking a breather this is like the most talking I've ever done in a video Okay, so all we're gonna do is just finalize this here and that one is good. And then with the other one where we had the open end on the hemmed side, we're just gonna take our little wooden bead and stick it right in. So then you see how we left that part open. Now, because it's pressed in there, now we can close it up and we just take a little glue and just press the two edges together. Biggity bam. Okay, once you have that done and you can choose to put a wire in the hand with the bead but i did not uh but if you do just put it in before you do this part which is lining up the top of the arm right at the top of the jacket and gluing it on again this is going to be hidden so um we're just gonna you know not gonna be seamstresses today with this okay <laughs> okay so now i just had to hold him steady and I found out where the bottom of that collar is because it does point down. You see how I kind of drew it that way? We're going to make sure we put our buttons, whatever you're using, below that, okay? So I have three buttons on each side. Find your happy place there. But because I was burning myself, I chose to stick a pin in the little foam dots and put them on that way. I just left the pins there until the glue dried and then I pulled them away. So I did the top, the bottom, and then the center ones. Isn't he cute so far? You guys, I love him. I do. I really, I really do. I play with him a lot. Okay, so this next part, and we're almost done with the entire body, everyone. We're just gonna glue on the collar, and all you're gonna do, make sure you don't go too close to the edge because you don't want any hot glue coming up. But I glued down one side, glued down the back edge, and then glued down the other. And here is our little fellow so far. Isn't he cute? He's cute. Okay, now we're gonna set him aside because now we're going to make our shoes. For this, I used two, actually I just used one popsicle or craft stick, not popsicle stick, it's the wider one. I cut it in half and created a long oval. That is included in the pattern if you'd like to get it. This is the stiff felt and what we did, it's in the pattern as well, is I just rolled it around and glued it on one of the shorter edges. And this is going to be filled later, but it's going to need to set, so that's why I'm doing it first. So you're just gonna roll it around and overlap the edges, and don't burn yourself. I should be using those hot glue thingies, but I'm not, because again, <laughs> I'm too lazy to get up and get them. I'm a horrible crafter. Okay, so once, and then this is a really important, you gotta make sure this sets, okay? And if you don't wanna hold it like I'm doing, just clip it, okay? You can use like little sewing clips, but just make sure you just set it off to the side. This is the toe piece of the boot. Make sure you cut the two little slits that are indicated in the pattern because what it's gonna do is it's going to wrap around the front bit, bit here it will not have any rocks or weight in it but just to let you know it will um this kind of style will make a big difference if you don't cut the slits okay so now that we've let that sit for just a hot minute we're gonna start assembling our boot now you can see all the pieces here i've got the boot shaft the boot cuff the toe piece and that little skinny one 
uh, which is going to be finishing everything off. So what we're going to do is just add a little hot glue to one of the edges and then we're going to place it and form it, sort of shape it to that boot shape uh, around the heel. Next up, we're going to attach our little front boot piece. I speak so much better when I have breaks. Sorry, everybody. Okay, so what we're doing is we're gluing down just the edge so that it can be secure. And you can tell I'm not going past the bottom of the two stacked popsicles, okay? So do, do it on one side, hold it there. You uh, use a little bit of glue, do the toe piece, and then uh, fix the last edge there on the other side. And if you don't get it perfectly lined up, don't worry, that's what that little piece is for. Um, and if you mess up like me, I will show you my mess ups. You guys know I will. I also will recommend a black marker, just FYI. It helps a lot. Okay, so now you can see with the glue, with the toe piece cut, everything works. Here is the top of the boot shaft. Uh, I wish I had black leather. If you do have black leather, this would be so perfect wrapped in black leather. But all we're doing is we're just adding the boot shaft um, to the top. And again, I messed up. There's glue there. I have to wait till it dries and I'll cut it off. Um, and then now I'm just adding the tiny little buckle. I made a second buckle for the boot and I just placed it right on that part that I had cut so you don't see the little slits in the felt. Okay, to make it all look shiny, happy, pretty, I'm just adding a tiny little border. Um, again, all of this is included in the pattern. Don't worry about sizing, but it's probably an eighth of an inch if you're not using my pattern. Maybe it's like an eighth of an inch. And so just make sure that you're lining up the two pieces in the back, okay? That's all. Is you okay, see that one side? Um, I put, I didn't take care in putting that boot shaft down. And so I'm gonna show you how I fix it. Okay, so you don't need that anymore. Let's move this out of the way so I don't burn myself. And now I'm gonna show you when you hold it, it looks good, but you see that white over there? That's not really white. Look at it, it's wood showing through. So I'm just gonna take a black marker and I'm gonna call it, oops, sorry. All right, now we get to the assembly part and this, well, sort of, we get to the assembly part. And this is really fun. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make, either you can use a wood dowel or you can do what I'm gonna do is color it. We're gonna use the boot and we're gonna weigh it down with teeny tiny pebbles. I will tell you from experience, poly pellets will not work. They're not heavy enough, okay? So just grab some pellets. I get them at the Target dollar spot or the dollar store. You can use aquarium things like fish tank rocks. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the two dowels there. So you can see I put one dowel in the boot, glued it down, added the rocks, and then the other one is just blank. And I'm gonna use that to make my two holes. So it, cause I don't wanna use my boot. Um, so you can see here the boot and just make sure you get it lined up so when he's standing up straight, it is straight. And now you can see without glue or anything, this um, peg leg and the boot are our stability. So if you want to make it look more like wood, just grab a, um, pencil and mark where this is actually even so that we can start our peg leg there. And we just yank out everything because we're not assembling it yet. But you can get a dark brown and a tan piece of polymer clay. And if you have something better that works like wood contact paper or whatever, find your happy place. I um, just have a lot of polymer clay that I have to use. So all I did was mix the two together in sort of a marbly look. So I didn't blend them all the way together. And then I started at that place that we had marked, making sure I don't go above it. And so I'm gonna have a razor so that I can make sure I'm cutting it to be flat because I want this to be stable. And if I don't cut it the flat, um, it, it won't be stable. So what I did is I added more clay to the top and near the body, and then I just smoothed the clay all the way down the peg leg, but I did not cover the very, very bottom because um, I didn't want to mess with that stability. And this is what it looks like before it's baked. So then you'll go bake it, let it cool, and then I prefer to always seal the clay, so I'm using a clay sealant from Sculpey. I use Sculpey clay. I use the Sculpey clay sealant. It dries in like 30 seconds, so no big deal there. <gasps> Guess what? Guess what? Now we're going to put everything together. So we need our peg leg, our boot, and that little piece of fabric uh, felt that we cut. We're gonna poke holes right where it's going to line up. So you just put that under, figure out where the holes are, and then line it up and play dance. 
you know, because you're doing a jig. And then what we're going to do is we're going to seal all those rocks in by putting glue inside. And we're going to be putting glue on the very top. Oh, those little webbies. And then we're going to be affixing it to the bottom of this gnome, so the felt round. And then I'm gonna just do the same exact thing with the little peg leg. Make sure you don't use too much glue, otherwise you'll have to clean it up. Yes, speaking from experience. And then you're, you're set to actually start assembling this. Okay, so I'll tell you, don't put glue on it yet because you gotta make sure that you get it perfectly even before you do just FYI. So again, we left a little bit of an edge there, right? So now we're just going to pull back with our stuff in place and we're going to pull back all the way around the edge, do the front first, make sure it cups down. And then we're just going to get as close to those poles as those dowels, I mean, as you can get, and then all the way back around. And you'll see that I had left a little space open in the jacket there. I'm just going to close that as well. And then I'm just going to make sure I'm pulling everything down all the way around. Around. See, I left the hole open. I don't know why I did that. I don't know. But anyway, you're going to be putting this all together and sealing everything up with glue. Isn't he cute? Oh my goodness, you're almost done. You're almost done. Now all you have to do is pick up all the lint that felt gets. And if you don't want to attach the jacket permanently, you totally can. I got these from the dollar store. They're little stick em felt no, what do you call it? Velcro. And I'm just going to put it on the inside. I do. I have a fear of commitment on this guy. Uh, he took a lot to design to make him easy without sewing. So I just wanted to make sure that if I wanted to change my mind that I could take off this jacket. So all I did was I used these little Velcro dots, opened up the coat, put it on the right here. You can see there's, um, the hook and the fuzzy side. I put the hook side on the jacket and the fuzzy side on the uh, body. And so now you can see, I'm just putting him there. You see? And you can choose to hot glue it down. If you want to hot glue it down, that's totally fine too. Again, I have a fear of commitment with regards to this. And look, there he is. You can split the beard. You can make the shorter beard. You can add a mustache, whatever you'd like. What do you think of this pirate? Will you make him? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for being here with me. The pattern is available. And as always, please like this video and subscribe to Ruffles and Rain Boots for more crafty fun.